Right, this is the AC armoured car. It was the only diesel powered armoured car used by the British Army during the Second World War. So in that sense, it's outstanding. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. Now, this vehicle was based on the AEC Matador tractor. It actually, I mean, don't make too much of that. It only has Matador-sized wheels and tyres on it. Otherwise, it's pretty well a unique vehicle. It's rear-engined for a start, powered by a diesel, an AEC six-cylinder diesel engine of about 158 horsepower. Now, they do say that's also the Valentine engine. It's not but it's very similar, it's a six-cylinder engine, just the same. But it's arranged in a rather peculiar way. It's arranged at an angle, it slopes down to the front a little bit. That's largely because it's linked to the gearbox and that puts it in a fairly direct line with the transfer box. But it also means that they can alter the rear of the vehicle to make it a little bit lower over its engine compartment which isn't a bad thing in a, a vehicle like this, an armoured car. Secondly, the engine is put in a bit ski-whiff. It's a bit off-centre. You'd expect it to be fore and aft, but it's not exactly. It's actually pushed a little bit to one side to avoid the differential on the back axle. So in that sense also, it's a little bit odd. It means they've rather forced the engine in, but it's all done to bring the height of the vehicle as low as possible. Not that it's very successful because it's quite a tall armoured car, but still it's an interesting concept. Now it means that the vehicle drives from its diesel engine through a four-speed gearbox into a transfer box, which would normally give you two speeds. Now that transfer box is actually designed in such a way that it only brings in four-wheel drive when it's required. Under normal circumstances on the highway or whatever you're doing, the vehicle itself drives on the front axle. It's an ordinary 4x2, but driven on the front axle only. So the rear axle is brought in when it's got to go across country to make it a four-wheel drive vehicle. And that's the purpose of the transfer box situated where it is. Now, the other thing is that the vehicle itself, the whole thing, weighs about 12 and a half tonnes. It's 12.7 to be exact. And that means that it's quite a big and quite solid vehicle. It's got 30 millimetres of armour thickness on it, which is about the same as a, an A13 Mark IV tank. So it's much more heavily armoured than most British armoured cars. It's armed, it's got a three-man turret and armed with a six-pounder gun. In this, this is a Mark II version, so it has the six-pounder gun mounted there with a coaxial beezer alongside it. And that's the sort of the body of the vehicle and the turret. Now you'll notice, for instance, that the driver has a rather odd arrangement. He sits in the front, he's by himself, sitting in the front, and when the vehicle's closed down, as it is now, he can only see through those two periscopes at the top. He's got no other vision block at all. So what he'd normally do is open the lid when he's driving safely and in sort of open country, raise the seat a little bit so he can see where he's going, and then he'd be able to view the road ahead through that screen that you can see there. Under normal circumstances, that screen wouldn't be folded up like it is. It would be folded flat when he's driving through periscopes, otherwise it makes driving almost impossible. But that's just to show the two methods of driving the vehicle. The Tank Museum is a registered charity and every purchase you make from our online shop directly supports our work. We ship worldwide and if you subscribe to our email list, we'll give you 10% off your next order. When you finish this video, go to tankmuseumshop.org and you'll find something you never knew you needed. And so it's a, it's a 4x2 driven by a diesel engine, um, weighs about 12.7 tonnes, it has a top speed of about 41 miles an hour, 
though I think it would be quite unusual to find it going fast on an a on active service. Just for getting there, it's fine, but for, for fighting, you're normally travelling a bit slower than that. The problem with the six-pounder was that although it would fire a good anti-tank round, a good solid shot round, it could ta easily take out a, a, an enemy tank if it wanted to, it wasn't any good at firing high explosive. The high explosive round that they gave with the six-pounder wasn't very effective, and since these cars were normally formed into a heavy troop in an armoured car regiment, and they were supposed to give close support to the armoured cars, they couldn't really do it without the high explosive content of the round coming out to, to explode like a, an artillery shell. They couldn't really do that. And the six pounder as a, a gun wasn't very popular. It was later replaced in the Mark III version with a 75 millimeter gun, which did have an effective high explosive round, but not in the Mark II. So that's one other thing against it. Now this particular vehicle is finished in the colour scheme that was used in Italy and it was in the service, or at least the marking showing an armoured car in service with what was then the 10th Indian Armoured Car Division but um, it's actually in the markings of Skinner's Horse in that division. It was the reconnaissance regiment that um, worked with the the division. So that's why it's marked as it is. It's an Indian marking. That was Indian Army rather than British Army. So it would have guys, Sikhs and so on in the turret and in the driver's seat. Reasonably powerful. They found that on cross-country work they were very good. The Mark I version of the AEC, which had the Valentine turret with the two-pounder in, wasn't so popular. It had the wheels and wings separate from the body, not covered in like this, and it tended to catch on things, rather a lot actually when it was going along. So if it could have a fully armoured front like this has, or fully covered front, it was a lot safer from that point of view. And that also made them popular, but the cars weren't really liked. Most of the, the units complained about the height of them because the reconnaissance in the British scheme of things was meant to be low profile, quiet, secretive if you like, and this car was anything but. It stuck up for miles above the hedges, you could see it coming a long way off, and it therefore formed a fairly effective target. But it's quite an interesting vehicle, and we're lucky to have it. It's probably, there's only three left in the world. I think there's one in Belgium and one in Russia, but apart from that, this is the only one. It's the AEC Mark II.